Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 22nd, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see the Hawaiian Islands, the bottom left here. Here's the Gulf of Alaska. There's Washington, Oregon. Look at this cold air marching across the Gulf of Alaska. This is what's coming next for the Pacific Northwest. So after one more warm day across much of the region here, we are going to cool things down, and we're even going to flirt with some snow for some of the higher hills around the Pacific Northwest here coming up. So you might see some flakes flying here in late March. March. Now, taking a look at this uh, beautiful spring day, Spokane, Washington, highs in the mid-50s to low 60s. A lot of sunshine, calm winds. This goes for a lot of the areas across the Pacific Northwest today, so get out and enjoy it. If you get the chance, the sun's setting after 7.15 now, so... You know, it is a very nice time of year when you get these warm temperatures here, but it's not going to last, unfortunately, folks. You can see here with a good graphic here from National Weather Service Seattle. Here we go. We're going to get a few showers developing late, and then we start to turn things colder with even a chance of a thunderstorm here. Then you can see the lower snow levels working their way in here as we go through Friday and on into the weekend as we stay below average temperatures here as we go on in through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. After being on a nice little streak here of getting some above average temperatures, across the area. And you can see that here, 57 yesterday, again, a little bit above average. I think that makes about, what, maybe the sixth day in a row that we've had above average. Today will be the seventh, probably headed towards 60 degrees here for Seattle. And then we're really going to cool things down, and we're definitely going to be below average later on this week through this weekend coming up here. Now, looking here, this is the European, so I'll put this into motion. One more nice day today, then some showers popping up through this evening and overnight tonight. Stronger frontal system comes in through the day Thursday. That colder air arrives, and you can see some of the snow trying to get down towards the lower elevations here west of the Cascades and even east of the Cascades as well. A little bit less moisture to work with over there, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some snowflakes flying, especially on the higher hills across some of the Willamette Valley, Puget Sound up through southwest BC here as we go on in through Friday. And then you can see the cold air kind of hanging out here. We're going to be troughy and showery as we go through the weekend, most likely. Also, this is maximum CAPE here, convective available potential energy. This is going to be what's coming our way across the Gulf of Alaska. And you can see that pouring into the Pacific Northwest here, bringing that instability, chance of a thunderstorm or two here across the region. And we'll look at this a little bit more closely tomorrow as well. Now looking here, this is at 700 millibars, somewhere up towards 10,000 feet, and you can see that slug of moisture moving across the Gulf of Alaska towards the Pacific Northwest here. A great visual representation of that occurring, the trough kind of remaining open here as we go on into the weekend, and then another storm system is going to slide down the backside of that trough here and bring us a fairly strong storm here off the coast of Oregon. We don't know where this is going to set up just yet, but it looks like it wants to bypass the Pacific Northwest and maybe impact California again. We'll watch that one over the next few days this is looking at the nam up towards 10,000 feet and you can see things as they currently are but then watch you'll clearly see this bowling ball of cold air slam into the pacific northwest we go through the day thursday on into friday here that's what's going to bring those lower snow levels here across the area and i'm hopeful this can bring some Meaningful snowfall to the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. We are abnormally dry here. Maybe even go into some drought conditions here in the next month or two, which is not a good thing when we're headed towards later spring and on into the summer months. This is two uh, meter temperature, so basically surface temperatures here, six hour chunks here. And as we go through the day today, look at this. Some nice temperatures showing up across uh, places west of the Cascades. Look at southwest BC getting up towards the lower 60s possibly. Maybe for Seattle, also eastern Washington. Nice day coming up, but enjoy it because look, by the time you get to Thursday, we're probably going to be locked in the 40s, maybe some upper 40s if we're lucky here across places west of the Cascades. One more decent day here across some of eastern Washington possible. I mean, at least the temperatures are fairly warm for some of the areas, maybe some upper 50s showing up there. And you go on in through Friday here and we're cooling down even further Further across much of the area here, as you can see, this cold air just get locked in. Saturday again, probably not getting out of the 40s for many areas west of the Cascades. Now taking a look here, this is Portland, and you can see today the warm day, and then the definite cool down coming as we go through Thursday and the weekend. Seattle, similar picture here, maybe some temps up towards the 60s here across the Puget Sound, then we're dropping back down as that cold upper level trough is going to take hold. This is looking at total snow Kuchera ratio in inches. This is last night's European run. And you can see we start to get some snowfall across some of the Oregon, Washington Cascades here. That's going to be good. We need it. 
And you can see there's a little bit of lower elevation snowfall trying to creep in here. It's very difficult to get this to stick down towards sea level here at this time of year. It's not impossible, but it's something we'll watch. But more likely, we'll see some snow flying on some of the higher hills around some of the area here. We'll look at this a little bit closer tomorrow morning, too, and try to you know, pinpoint where this might occur a bit more. But right now, it looks like higher elevations, but still pretty low, slow, low snow levels coming up here as we go through the day Friday. This is looking at yesterday afternoon's European run. There's that storm that impacted California. We're kind of north of that trough, getting a nice day today. But then that cold air arrives there. You can see that trough carve out over the west here. And then that next storm swings down across Oregon towards northern California here. So what will happen then? The extended looks like we're going to remain in kind of a north-northwest flow, continuing to bring some activity down out of the north here as well. There's another trough that would be sometime later next week. But we'll watch that as we go. We're kind of looking a little bit far out in the fantasy land here. But there's still that signal for the blowout average temperatures here as we go towards the end of the March for the Pacific Northwest. This is 6 to 10 day temperature outlook kind of highlights that here with the bullseye on the West Coast. It actually has us a little bit below average across some areas of the Pacific Northwest as we go through the end of the March coming period coming up here as you know kind of that North Northwest flow doesn't usually bring a lot of moisture into the region here. Not as much as the southwest warmer flow anyway. Six, uh, eight to 14 day temperature outlook through April 4th. <clears throat> you can see the bullseye here across western portions of North America as well. And this is our de precipitation departure from average. I updated this again and you can see that below average signal there as we've been dealing with the last three months across the Cascades. Hopefully this does not turn into an active fire season across some of western Washington and Oregon coming up here. Now, this is looking at the latest El Nino slash La Nina numbers, or as otherwise known, ENSO. This is Nino 3.4. That's where we measure those conditions. And look at this. For the first time since 2020, we are now into positive territory across the Central Pacific Ocean. And you can see that climb here in the Nino 3.4. All this time spent in La Nina, and now we're climbing out, and we have just peaked above the zero line there. So looking at this, you can see that the last time we were above zero there across the Equatorial Pacific was in April of 2020. So yeah, it took us almost three years to get back around to that point, but we are finally out of La Nina. We are at strictly in neutral conditions here across the Equatorial Pacific, and we're going to head towards an El Nino here most likely as we go through summer and fall coming up here. So and one more look here. This is the last 90 days here, sea surface temperature anomaly loop. So starting here, look at how chilly the Central Pacific was there back in December. But as we go through January, you can see some warming occurring. So we go into February, it continues. And now here we go on into March, and you can see it continuing and extending across into uh, region Nino 3.4, where we measure those conditions here. So yeah, you're wa we're watching this transition in real time here, folks, and we're going to see just how strong this El Nino is going to be coming up here. We don't know just quite yet. We could be headed towards a moderate El Nino. And really, sometimes we don't get a heads up until a couple months in advance that a strong El Nino is on the way here. So we'll just continue to watch that as we go. And we'll probably talk about some of the details and what we can expect. I also did a separate video, if you want to look in the playlist, educational piece on what La Nina and El Nino can mean for the Pacific Northwest, for example. So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, so enjoy this last day. I mean, I hope you guys are having a good day and you're able to get out and enjoy it there. But it looks like that's going to be the end of the warmth here for a while across the Pacific Northwest, at least probably through the weekend coming up here. There's always a chance at this time of year you can get some sun breaks intermixed in those time frames there. And it can make for a fairly decent portion of the day at least coming up. But anyway, yeah, we're going to cool down here. Um, hope you guys are having a good day. We'll do this again tomorrow. We'll take a look a little bit more detail here and just how low the snow levels are going to be be coming up as we go through Friday and the weekend here as well. But otherwise, we'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.